Pandora, the moon from the film Avatar. We're returning here again in honor of the release of the new installment of this movie. Hello guys! Today in the Space Engine Planetarium, we'll once again visit Pandora and all the other moons of the gas giant Polyphemus. I've installed a recently updated mod for this system, here it is. For anyone interested, the link to this system is in the description. In short, you can actually see Pandora here in close-up. In the background is the gas giant Polyphemus. And about Pandora itself, this is a moon with life. Here we have organic, multicellular, marine and terrestrial life. As we know from the film, intelligent beings, the Navi, live here. If we compare this moon to Earth, its diameter is 11,438 kilometers, so it's slightly smaller than Earth, and its mass is 0.72 of Earth's mass. Let's descend to the surface of Pandora, right away, somewhere in this area. Here we can see a continent. And right away we can see vegetation. And if we look along the horizon, this is the landscape here. So a bit more on the characteristics. The atmosphere here consists of nitrogen, carbon dioxide, oxygen, xenon, methane, and there's also hydrogen sulfide. I'll show you in more detail later, guys. The pressure is 1.1 atmospheres, so a little more than on Earth. And the average temperature is 21 degrees Celsius. Let's look around and see how everything looks here. If we turn this way, we can see some kind of moon. The gas giant Polyphemus has many moons, so the views here will of course be very interesting. And here we see the star. Here we have the star Toliman, or Alpha Centauri B. However, in reality, this system where Pandora is located is in the Alpha Centauri star system, Histotelus Sondi. And so, the gas giant Polyphemus and Pandora orbit the star Alpha Centauri A. Here, this star is called Rigel Centaurus. Now I'll fly back into space. And I'll demonstrate Pandora to you in more detail. I'll hide the display of the atmosphere and clouds for you. And let's assess the total amount of land and water on the planet. In principle, everything is fairly even, as you can see. But it does seem like the ocean slightly predominates overall. At the poles here we see there are ice caps. And now I want to descend somewhere into this region, where the gas giant Polyphemus will be clearly visible in the sky. Wow, guys, look what a beautiful spot I found. There's the gas giant Polyphemus, and you can also see the neighboring moons. Here's one of them. We can even see neighboring planets in this system. And here is another large moon, and here are some more moons as well. These are the smaller moons, and these are the mountains here, which are just incredibly beautiful to look at. Now, let's speed up time here and watch the movement of the moons and the gas giant itself and we can even see the movement of the clouds. Wow, some kind of lettuce-colored moon has risen here. The moon Polyphemus Spa, a warm asteroid. Interesting, of course, how all this looks. Let's switch to the automatic photo mode, and now I'll adjust the exposure. There, guys, this is probably about how we would see it in the sky. And now a star is rising. If I catch the moment, I'll show you the sunrise. Well, actually, the sunrise is happening behind the mountains, so you can't see the star from here. And by the way, let's take a look at this place during the day. We can see a stunning view. Let me go down a bit lower. We can see a lot of vegetation on the mountaintops. And here we have a lake or a river. It looks more like a river. But in general, we can go down here. And some water has made its way over here. Now let's get near the coast. I'll show you how things are here. I'll set it to normal time mode. Well, basically, this is a very interesting spot on Pandora. Look at the dense clouds that are starting to cover this place. But you can still see the gas giant shining through them. Now I'll descend somewhere around here on Pandora. Let's see what it's like here, where there are fewer mountain peaks and more flat areas. We can see mountains in the distance. Remember in the second movie, they oftentimes showed us an eclipse on Pandora throughout the film. Let's try to recreate the eclipse in the planetarium. It wasn't that simple. I had to fast forward time to get the gas giant Polyphemus and the stars to line up, so to speak. And now you'll be able to see the eclipse. Here we have Alpha Centauri A approaching Polyphemus. I'll speed up time even more, and let's see how it looks. I'll even zoom in with the telescope, and now you'll see the star's eclipse. Now we can slow down time just a little bit. And so, in fact, that's how an eclipse happens on Pandora. Wow, that looks gorgeous. Resetting the zoom. And now it's like you can't see anything at all. Well, there's also the star Alpha Centauri B, by the way. It will also be eclipsed by the gas giant. Let me speed up time. Now Alpha Centauri A will emerge from behind Polyphemus, and then Alpha Centauri B will be eclipsed. Oh, everything became so bright all of a sudden. Well, let's now watch the eclipse of Alpha Centauri B, and this is how it will go behind it. There, and it's gone. And next, let's see what a sunset on Pandora looks like. Enjoy the view. That was amazing. Well, we still have the second star, Alpha Centauri B, which will be setting over the horizon.
And now it will be almost completely night on the moon. And let's look at the night sky. Yeah, well, in general, you can see the large Magellanic Cloud, the satellites of the Milky Way. You can see the small moons of Polyphemus and the large moons. And Polyphemus itself. I also decided to put a city like this here, as if this is a human base on Pandora. Let's fly into one of these domes, for example, right here. And what will we see here? We can see Alpha Centauri B, and over there in the distance Polyphemus is peeking out. Cool. If we decide to move somewhere over here and then perhaps somewhere over here and actually look at Polyphemus, well, that's just really incredible. I'll also speed up time. Well, in accelerated time, of course, it's more interesting to watch. Now a little information about this Spotnik. I want to tell you here. Whoever installs this mod, you can read information about Pandora. Everything is described here in great detail. I want to show you the atmosphere. This is why a person will feel bad here. Nitrogen 47%. It's clear that there is 28% oxygen, but the problem here is that there is as much as 18% carbon dioxide. A person without a breathing apparatus would be very ill here with such a concentration of carbon dioxide. Well, besides this, there is another toxic gas, hydrogen sulfide. He also has such and such a percentage. It is ejected from active volcanoes on Pandora. Now let's go and see this gas giant polyphene. Actually, here it is, all in shades of blue blue and light blue. Shades, such a rather beautiful gas giant. I'll switch to automatic photo mode. Yes, that makes it even cooler. We see an eclipse of satellites on it. Well, about its characteristics. It says that the diameter is 114913 kilometers. Its mass is one and a half times the mass of Jupiter. Now about his other companions. It orbits Alpha Centauri. Hey, I'll say it again one more time. Actually, he is the fourth in the system. Well, let's take a look at it. The most interesting satellites. Well, yes, there are some small ones here called Polyphemus 1. This, by the way, in my opinion, is the one who burned with green, if I'm not mistaken, remember? Next comes the second satellite called Galatea. Well, it's kind of egg-shaped, a plus prize. Because here the sunny day is just under 5 hours. But it is small, only 1,148 kilometers in diameter. There is some kind of xenon atmosphere. But I think it would be more interesting to fly to this Sputnik, Apion. It has such an interesting name. Here it is already in a round shape. But it is already quite large, 4593 kilometers. But there's no atmosphere on it, guys. That's why I won't even go down to the surface. Let's see what's interesting next. Here is a satellite called Geolos. Here too is an atmosphereless object. In fact, it looks a little bit like the moon in some way. Well, the series is essentially enough, I suggest we return to this egg-shaped satellite. And I'm interested in just landing somewhere around here. And since we're closer to the gas giant Polyphemus, it should be absolutely enormous here in the sky. Let's take a look. Well, yes, that's right. That's how big our Polyphemus is here in the sky. Well, if you switch to HDR mode, then no. Still, in auto mode, it's somehow more atmospheric. This whole thing looks good. Let's speed up time a little more. Well, not even a little. Let's speed it up a thousand times. Well, here we see a change of phases. Here, of course, there is a certain capture. Therefore, it does not move in the sky. And here's what's interesting. I fly out from this Sputnik and see these red areas on it. Wow. Well, just a red light and that's it. The temperature here is... Ah, right now it is 896 degrees Celsius. Wow. Perhaps, due to the friction that is created by the polyphene material, there are actually some frayed areas right here. We are now flying to this satellite called KELT. It's minus 9 degrees Celsius here. Well, actually, this is also quite an interesting satellite. I would even say that it is the second most interesting satellite of Polyphemus, because here, as we see, we have a completely watery world, a temperate marine extravaganza. Let me hide the atmosphere and clouds here. Well, not a completely water world, sorry. There are such islands, but we don't see any life on them. This is how it is on the surface. In general, I flew here on this satellite and saw that the surface here is quite uneven. Everywhere, there are some hills and mountains. In general, there are very few flat areas. Regarding the atmosphere, nitrogen sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide are present here. The diameter of this satellite is 9 to 36 kilometers, and its mass is 0.3 of the Earth's mass. Well, let's look at the sky. We see such interesting clouds and stars. Well, I don't see Polyphemus from this spot. Let's move closer to the reservoir. Now I'm going to fly like this. And you see that everything here is quite mountainous. And so I fly up to some body of water. Let me land somewhere around here, just near the coast. Here I am. Here a river of some sort begins. Well, here we see a less deep place, and then there is something deeper. And let's take a look at what we have here in the sky. Well, in short, this is such an interesting alien landscape. Well, for the sake of interest, let's go down some more. Somewhere around here. By the way, I was thinking about going down, but here you see there's such a thin strip where there's no lighting. Let's go down somewhere around here. I see we have a continent. As I understand it, from here we will be able to see the gas giant Polypheus in the sky. It will be a little smaller than on Pandora because we have moved a little away from it. 
Well, actually, this is what it looks like here. And by the way, I would also like to see Pandora from its surface. We have Pandora somewhere there. Let's move on. Here's Pandora. Wow, she certainly looks really good. We can use a telescope, zoom in and look at it. Well, yes, through the atmosphere of this satellite Pandora, it is somehow really, really red. Well, by the way, I'll speed up time and you'll now see how Pandora will, on the contrary, get closer to this satellite. Well, let's move away. Well, as you move around the Polyphemus, it will be different. Its size. By the way, I focused on it, you see? It became very dim there. Well, and now I haven't seen her for a day. And now it will come closer again. Look, look right there at Pandora. Again, this is very close. This is probably one of the closest points to it. Well, it's very visible. A truly magical view. That's certainly true. Here I have enlarged it. Here I dropped it. And let's stop time like this. Well, we can increase it again. Well, this time Pandora doesn't look so red anymore. Most likely we were just looking close to the horizon. Now let's see what other interesting satellites are here. We still have some left. Well, here is the next satellite called Illyrius. It is minus 12 degrees, the diameter is 8846 kilometers. Here it is by mass, 0.26 of the Earth's mass. The atmosphere is composed of nitrogen, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide is also present. The pressure is 0.75 atmospheres. And here we have a temperate marine carbonia. We can also see some islands here. Well, if it's a marine world, then there must be continents as well. Yes, in fact, here you can see the continents. It's a rather desert-like world here. Let's descend somewhere around here. Everything is so yellow, it's just incredible. And there are also these small hills and elevations with multicolored people. And what's this strange thing here? Is that water or what is it? Yes, look, it's actually water. Let's go down to the bottom here. Interesting, isn't it? And the next moon is called Gal. For some reason, it reminds me of the planet Mars. It's 67 degrees Celsius there. Its diameter is 4,478 kilometers, and its mass is just over two and a half times that of the moon. The atmosphere contains xenon and krypton, but it's thin, with a surface pressure of only 0.15 atmospheres. Here I am on its surface, and this is the kind of terrain we have here. And this is what the atmosphere is like. It's quite similar to the last moon. Let's look at the sky. Besides the two stars, we can also see Polyphemus here, but it's already quite small because we're now looking at its most distant moons. And the last large moon of Polyphemus is called Dem. Let's fly over and take a look. Here we have a moon with no atmosphere, with a temperature of minus 19 degrees Celsius. The diameter isn't very large, 2,782 kilometers, and its mass is only 0.68 times that of the moon. Here I've landed on its surface, and we can see Polyphemus very far away. By the way, I'll tell you the distance to Polyphemus from here. It is... Wow, the distance here is just enormous. 3,577,905 kilometers to Polyphemus. That's a huge distance. And from here we can also see the moon Pandora. If you enjoyed the journey, please support it with likes and comments. Thank you.